Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy here for Nerds by Nerds, hanging out with some of my colleagues. I'm Ted. I'm Nate. And uh, this video was actually inspired by Dirk Gordon. Um, and he was talking about his campaign he has going on. Uh, uh, it's a pirate campaign set in Forgotten Realms. And what, you know, something he said in that comment just triggered something in my brain and said, hey, that would be a good, good, good thing to do a video on. So role playing and travel. Now, you know, he's talking about, he talked about, he's like, I didn't know what to do with it. So, you know, I kind of like fast forward through and skip over a lot of the travel, which is absolutely a valid thing. There is no reason to go through every little bit. Oh, yeah. Especially if you're, if you've got characters that aren't interested in telling their stories to other people. Mm -hmm. So if you've got characters that don't have backgrounds that are fleshed out at all, yeah. or if you've got characters like, eh, I don't, I'll just sit in my room and whittle on a stick or something. Right. So, so for those type of characters that they're not seeking any, any interaction, it's like, you know what? You go ahead and chill for a bit. The characters that want to role play, here's, here's some opportunities. And, so, well, first of all, let's, let's go over one thing real quick. The, uh, the, the modes of travel pretty much that this is going to affect would be overland, mm -hmm. which could either be in a caravan wagon on a horse or foot. Mm -hmm. um, it could be uh, a, sea vo a sea voyage. Uh, depending on your campaign, you could have airships. Yep. You could have spell jamming vessels. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pretty Not. much anywhere where you can sit, stand, or walk at a sed sedentary pace that you could interact and talk at the same time. Now, my, from, from my perspective, the, the boat travel, the air travel, and space travel are all going to fall in, into you know, one, one, one mechanic in, in, in my brain. And, you know, that is, there's there's two different methods to dealing with the RP and the travel. If you don't have characters that are seeking RP um, activities, role-playing activities, then you've got, you know, totally just visual and describe anything that you will, that they would have encountered um, visually that might, might, you do the summary. Appealing. You do this. You do the summary. It's like you know, and cryptos. You know, yeah, absolutely the things you saw and in your travels. You know, if you have the ability to describe it in such a way that you know the the intuitive players might be like, well, was this a hook? Was this something that you know we should have investigated? You know, is this something we should come back to later? And it, and it, it's going to sow those seeds into you know what's going on. And when it happens, guys, take notes, listen, take notes, and write it down. So that it can become something. Yeah, if, if they seem genuinely interested in it. Absolutely. So that this way you're rewarding, you know, them for creative thinking. Uh, the other the other uh, action is if there are non non party member, you know, on the vessel, have them seek out uh, players to role play with. And you know, this is a good opportunity to seek out the the less RP. Um, you know, people, you know, if they're not like to those who don't naturally seek it out, it gives you a chance to say, you know what? Let's, it can seek them out. <laughs> it can seek them out. And just to try to bring up their game a little bit. You know, you, you know, as a DM, what players at your table are the, the experienced ones and which ones are inexperienced. I mean, it's going to be variable levels at every single game table. So that's your opportunity to help somebody out a little bit. You, you can expect less from them and that's fine. Just it's your chance to really let them shine a little bit and you never know. They might just surprise you. Yeah. They engage the, engage the players. So, so there, there's several ways to go about this, right? So you can have, there's several kinds of different encounters you can use in any of these situations. Now in, the caravan will have some similarities to boat travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vessel travel. Yeah, vessel travel. Land and, and and you know, um, just but general overland is completely different. They have free roam. You, you know, there's there's def there's definitely more options as mm -hmm. far as of what what your players can do. But on the vessel travel, no matter the means, it's nice in the sense that you have this confined space that they cannot leave, mm -hmm. and so they're kind of at your mercy, sort of. So you can make that into whatever you want. It can be role play, playing encounters on the ship. It can be hazards on the ship from, you know, from weather or something. It could be, you know, hostile encounters with something that's off the ship. Uh, we recently had a campaign that the most of the session happened on the boat, and there was only one combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there, but there was a ton of stuff going on. There's a lot of role playing and a lot of inter interesting things going on. Yeah. So it can be whatever your group wants it to be. If your DM wants if you're if your DM and your players all want to interact 
with NPCs and players and even other uh, other players together, you know, during that time, it you know, it could just be a session of role playing if your group's into that. Yeah, and if and if your group's like a more of a mix, well, you know, give a little role play, give a little combat. You know, it, it can all happen on on that kind of situation where you're on a vessel and and traveling from one place to another. I mean, you know, we were traveling and did a whole bunch of role playing and then got attacked by uh, marine creatures. So, and, you know, or you can do like a weather hazard where the players are like maybe the players are useless in that encounter. And when things are going on, and it kind of just it, it gives the feel of they're some part of something larger, and they don't have control of everything all the time. Like if they're not sailors, then they're not going to be any, of any use on the ship. If they don't have magic and they can you know calm the weather or something, mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to do anything about it. They're kind of just there and at the, at the mercy. And like this, you know, you you can use this for foreshadowing whether it's going to lead to an encounter, or you can use it in for, to foreshadowing. In a way that makes them think it's going to lead to a counter. So you can either way you can use it to build suspense, mm -hmm. and and also, you know, it, it becomes a way to actually either give player agency in your world to the characters or take it away, depending on how they're able to interact with that situation. Because in the real world, you can't always affect everything around you. Sometimes yeah. you just really are powerless. You just gotta take it. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta <laughs> hold on to some ropes. We just gotta roll with the punches. Yeah, and so, but you know, and then other people may just come up with interesting things to do during that scenario. Yeah. With with the RP, it's definitely important to have some dynamic characters. I mean, don't make them all caricatures of interesting things. Sometimes a sailor is just a sailor. <laughs> and so, you know, it's the same thing with like the innkeeper does not have to always be a retired fighter or something. You know? <laughs> well, no, you're right. And but but that being said, does that mean that doesn't necessarily mean he's uninteresting or boring? Exactly. He's he's a seller. You imagine all the things you've seen if he's yes. down from port to port. You know, the strange like, things he might have you know learned about or seen in the different port and like, oh yeah, I've heard this rumor about this. You can uh, give him all kinds of things. They might think are hooks or some other kind of plot. Every NPC that's going to interact in some way, shape, or form has some bizarre tidbit of knowledge or something interesting that the players don't have it, it, yeah. it's a guaranteed thing and when you make npcs if a, if a party member or a player tries to interact with an npc give them something to make to make that character stand out and if they never go back to them it's no big deal if they go back to them well that character then becomes more important and yeah, just, you can build as it goes, you know. You know. We've talked about that in other other videos yeah, before. Yeah, and maybe the next time they're on a sailing vessel again, they encounter that same guy. Maybe it's a different vessel, and it's he's got a whole story to tell. It's Why? Like, oh man, <laughs> you would never believe this. Or maybe he's the sailor that tells tall tales all the time, you know. So like <laughs> the players think you're like giving them all these hooks and stuff to <laughs> sink into, but really it's just a drunk sailor that likes to tell stories. Oh, that'd be amazing. And, like. Three adventures later, you tell them they, they find out. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, that, that's clearly not true. <laughs> but, 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 I had I all my hopes and dream on this treasure island. Yeah, yeah, you know, like one of the other, like the captain goes, You were listening to Sailor John. Nobody listens to Sailor John. <laughs> yeah. Unless they want a good story. And there can be, there can be consistent events that occur on a vessel that don't occur anywhere else. Like uh, uh, in the caravan, you've got caravan guards gambling at night, and maybe mm. some of the players go and join them. And might hear some interesting rumors or discussions or talk or just like general you know general whatever and then there might be uh, uh on a shipping on a sailing vessel there might be a wizard going someplace so maybe if you have other wizards and spellcasters in the group they'd be interested in talking to that guy yeah so. it could absolutely be a case of you know interesting other traveling companions that aren't necessarily part of the story they just happen to be along for the ride like mm -hmm. a vampire like a vampire as the case may be <laughs> But that is a ta tall tale for another day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so hopefully this helps people when when uh, when they watch this video and they get an idea of how they can spice up their travel time. And you and it is still legitimate to go. Okay, the time just passes. Yeah. Describe some scenery, some interesting things that might have happened. If everyone's fiending for getting to that island or getting to that across the sea to go, you know, what do whatever or their quest is, then you know, you yeah. can always have it. Be on the adventure way back. A clear indicator that you, you're not going to have that kind of session is when you go, "What do you do?" and no one has anything to do. You know, mm -hmm. so at that point, you know, instead of instead of forcing it upon them, or you know, if you make a couple overtures and they're not really biting on them and they they lack interest, then you can go. You know what? It's uneventful. Or oh, you know, you two weeks of sea passes, 
and then you describe something that's going on because it's going to be an encounter or whatever. An another thing that you, you, you can do, um, and, I, and I've, I've seen this happen um, more recent as opposed to in, in years past, uh, and I've, I've started to, to adapt it uh, a little bit here and there, is when you have an encounter that is like, you know, clearly well below um, you know what what the party is capable of handling. You can do it as, as just a a visual thing. Like okay, you know, all right. Well, you guys traveled over overseas for a couple of days. At one point in time, a couple of sea creatures. You know, give them whatever descriptions you want to use. Att attempt to uh, you know climb aboard your vessel and and destroy the mast and whatnot. And you know the the darings of you know fighter over here and paladin over here. Slay the valiant creatures. The you know cleric healed up the wounds and you went went about your journey without them actually having to go through the combat. And here's here's a chance and again as a DM to give some players who need some limelight a, a chance to shine without any dice rolling needing needing to happen. Just just describe how you did it. Right. Yeah, you know, or you could do fun things like, oh, you know, you as you pass you pass another ship at sea and then you know, you see something pull it under and you see huge tentacles and you know, you guys just fly out of there. <laughs> so you escaped the combat, but the other ship did not. Yeah, I mean you could even start going into it like it's an encounter and then go into the gloss over. Right. And one of the players are like, Oh crap. You know, let them sweat a little bit and then be like, eh, you know, it's got its full. It's not coming for your <laughs> yeah, ship. Yeah, just say the whole ship of people. You're but fine. it will definitely make them think twice about coming back through that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they could come upon, you could also have little bits at sea where they're coming upon a shipwreck or um, uh, a floundering ship that they assist. Well, yeah, you know, you could literally do, you know, non-combat friendly encounters. At yeah, sea. Mm -hmm. especially if, you know, like, we're like oh, they're not really role-playing because there's not many interesting people on here. Well, here's a way to inject people that, they're ingratiated they to their, their their rescuers. Yeah, they have a story to tell. Yeah, so there's all there's all kinds of different interactions that can happen along the way that that'll boost it. So I think we've reached our destination. I believe so. Mm. So what do you guys think? You know, if you have any tidbits or things that you want to want to share, go ahead and put them in the comments below. While you're doing that, feel free to hit like, share, even subscribe. And uh, for you guys that don't know, we have a Patreon account. You guys can help us out and. Even a dollar a month would be awesome, and we'd appreciate it greatly. Mm -hmm. And you can also join the conversation over on Reddit. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.